Apple is great at many things, but amongst those undoubtedly has to be the fact that they can make any previous generation product look well outdated and vintage once you release your current gen. And well, imagine going to the streets and saying you have a Intel based MacBook in 2022. <gasps> You're gonna get some filthy, disgusting look by someone out there who has the latest MacBook, and they'll probably point you to the nearest history museum and tell you to hang yourself up as an exhibit. But that does beckon a very real question. What's it like actually using a Intel-based MacBook in 2022? Is it really that bad of an experience or is it just overhyped to the extent where it's like really doesn't make a big difference in your day-to-day -day use case? Well, we're gonna answer those questions right here at this video. So if you enjoy the content, make sure you hit that like button and sub to our channel. Let's get started. For this test, we have a proud volunteer. This 13 inch MacBook Pro from 2020. This was the base configuration you could buy at the time. So it's rocking a eighth generation Core i5 processor. I did configure 16 gigabytes of RAM and it has a standard base 256 gigabyte solid state drive. And like I mentioned, this was technically one of the last MacBooks you could buy before Apple entirely replaced it with their M series lineup of MacBooks. So let's put it to the test. Starting with the con common ground first, you'll be happy to know that this MacBook Pro looks literally the same as the current outgoing generation of the M2 13 inch MacBook Pro. They literally have identical dimensions, they have the same linear design, and in fact, even the most elite of Apple lovers would have to try really hard to identify this as an Intel based MacBook on a first glance. You'll also be happy to know that both of them still have two USB-C ports in the base configuration. Granted, this one has slightly dated Thunderbolt 3 ports, while the current MacBook Pro has slightly faster Thunderbolt 4 ports. But putting that aside, they are very identical. Even when you unfold the laptop, both of them have the exact same trackpad with that gorgeous glass surface, and both of them are rocking Apple's latest Magic Keyboard. Thankfully, by the time we got to this generation of Intel-based MacBooks, they had ditched the butterfly stroke mechanism entirely. Even the display is exactly the same. So this MacBook right here has a display configuration of 100% sRGB and DCI-P3 color gamut coverage. It has a peak brightness of 500 nits. Guess what? The current outgoing MacBook Pro has the exact same display specifications even after two generations. So you're looking pretty good if you get an Intel based MacBook right now, at least at first glance. The real difference of course should technically come when it comes to performance because because this MacBook Pro and the current generation use two entirely separate processors and architectures altogether. But here's the thing. If you're buying a 13 inch MacBook Pro to do day to day activities like web browsing, watching 1080p videos on YouTube or Netflix, doing word processing on Microsoft Word or Google Docs, or doing online banking, all those activities require nominal horsepower and they're going to work exactly the same on this much older MacBook Pro than they do on the new MacBook Pro. There's no practical difference whatsoever. And if that's where your use case ends, then honestly, Again, the Intel MacBook is totally viable. Where the difference does start becoming more and more apparent is when you take it up a notch. When you start doing moderately intensive activities, like let's say Lightroom photo editing on this laptop, you start noticing that there is micro lag. For example, some processes might take longer to apply as certain filters have a longer loading time. And in rare instances, you might even see the application briefly freeze on you. None of these issues are prevalent on the newer generations of MacBook. They're much more efficient in handling tasks like these. And if you're bold enough to do something like 4K video editing on this MacBook Pro, you will suffer. In fact, any sort of multi-layer editing on this 13 inch device just is a very borderline non-viable experience. You have a lot of lag, there's rendering issues, and on top of that, it can occasionally freeze as well. And that isn't so much to do with the fact that you don't have enough horsepower. It's more to do that these devices get very hot, which I'll talk about in just a minute. Now, in contrast to this on the M2 MacBook Air that I just reviewed, that doesn't even have a cooling system. And that thing can easily handle multi-layer 4K editing, which shows the difference in performance between these two devices over the span of just two years. Now, thermals tell a rather interesting story. For example, the current latest generation M2 MacBook Pro 13 inch can 
hit a maximum surface temperature of approximately 40 degrees Celsius. In contrast to this, this MacBook Pro right here can hit a maximum surface temperature of about 43 degrees Celsius. Neither of these are volatile temperatures, but there is a modest three degree difference on average, which tells you this laptop definitely gets hotter. But the real difference is when we talk about system or fan noise. For example, in the case of the outgoing M2 MacBook Pro, you'll find that the peak fan noise you'll hit with doing activities like 4K video editing is usually around 30 decibels. In contrast to this, the peak fan noise, which you'll often hear with this kind of a MacBook can go all the way up to 43 decibels and sometimes even higher than that if you keep pushing the laptop. And it's not just about how loud it gets, it's about how often. So for example, the M2 MacBook Air, which doesn't even have a fan, never ever gets loud because it's on inaudible and it has no cooling system. The M2 MacBook Pro hardly ever has the fan go on unless you're doing anything more intensive than video editing or 3D modeling. But in this case, the Intel-based MacBook always has its fan going on, even if you have too many Chrome tabs open, for example. So that is a very real difference. Battery life is yet another area we see a very big difference in. So with the Intel-based MacBook Pro here, I was able to get up to 10 hours on a single charge in its heydays at 50% screen brightness, doing activities like web surfing, word document crunching, even some light photo room editing, and streaming videos at 1080p on Netflix or YouTube, applying very similar real world use cases to the M2 MacBook Air, which I recently reviewed, I was able to get up to 15 hours on a single charge. And in the case of the M2 MacBook Pro, some benchmarks have indicated as much as 16 hours of real world usage, which is all very impressive. And that just shows you how much of a difference Apple has made in the efficiency department between the Intel MacBooks and the latest M generation MacBooks. So definitely a big win for the current generation. In summary, yes, you absolutely can use a Intel-based MacBook in 2022, provided your use case is on the more simple side. If you're using it for day-to-day -day activities, which I mentioned like web browsing, word crunching, Excel crunching, whatever it might be, there is no practical difference between the latest MacBook and a two-year-old MacBook that has an Intel processor. In fact, you might even argue that from that standpoint, it's a better value to find the cheaper Intel MacBook in the third party or secondhand market if you can. But of course, the minute you start doing activities that go beyond that threshold, whether it's programming, 3D modeling, video editing, photo editing, the fact is the M1 and M2 MacBooks are a far better bargain in the long term as they do have visible advantages in both performance and efficiency overall. But again, the purpose here is to show it from an end user perspective and answer your question of, can I get an Intel MacBook and still use it? Yes, you very much can. Now keep in mind, I didn't cover all the aspects. There's stuff like the fact that you have Wi-Fi 6 on the latest generation, whereas the Wi-Fi 5 on the Intel MacBooks and a number of other technical feats, which I didn't mention. But overall, hopefully I gave you an idea of what it's like. If you enjoyed the content, make sure you hit that like button and sub to our channel. It genuinely helps us grow. Catch you in the next one.